back from vacation and this is what we came home to. Hi everyone, it's Julia. I have a little nature themed mini quilt for you today. I thought this would make a wonderful gift for any of those nature lovers on your list. I do have the pattern available in my Etsy shop if any of you do want to give it a try. It has step, a lot of step-by-step -step instructions with a lot of pictures and then also of course the design in the back as well. Now I did print this off using my printer and it has one of my favorite nature quotes by John Muir. It says, and into the forest I go to lose my mind and find my soul. I will link down below a video by Lisa Capen who goes on step by step on how to print off on your, with your printer. She actually uses a laser printer and I have an inkjet printer. So both do work and I do use free freezer paper for this. And so in this video, I do share a little bit of that, but you can also go to her video. She has a real detailed video on how to do it. So let's get started. I'm starting with a piece of natural colored muslin. This is gonna be the top of my quilt, or my little mini quilt. I'm gonna be adding some freezer paper to the back side of it. I have my freezer paper cut at eight and a half by 11 inches. I'm going to be running this through my printer and that's the US copy size. Just ironing this freezer paper on, there's like a plastic side to it that attaches very easily to fabric. I'm just making sure everything is trimmed up so it doesn't get caught in my printer. And also taking one, my, one more final press to make sure that edge that's going through that printer is really secured. And this is what it looks like, I just printed that word file right on to that comes in the packet and I just printed that right onto this piece gently tearing this away so it doesn't distort any of my fibers or any of my fabric this is a lightweight muslin and so I am going to be adding a mid-weight interfacing on the back of this and just a ironing this on using the manufacturer's instructions. You can also use a tearaway stabilizer if you prefer. Um, I just want to be, I'm going to be doing some free motion stitching on this and I want my, my stitches to be stabilized. If you're not comfortable running your fabric through up the printer, I did a pillow using the same design and I traced the words using a fabric marker. I believe I use my pit pens for this, but you can also use Arteza uh, fabric markers and I'll link both of those down below. Um, this is what the pit pen looks like and it comes in four different size nibs. There's four different pens that come in a set um, and they are like an Indian ink and watercolor, water fast and waterproof and color fast and all that good stuff. Adding my borders, added my borders to the side first and then I always press my seams towards my binding and I'm just taking a quarter inch seam allowance on this. So my borders are on. Now it's on to that applique design. Using a little piece of freezer paper again and tracing, I can just see right through that. So I'm just tracing this, just using a mechanical pencil here. So my paper side is up and that plastic side of the freezer paper is down. And now I'm ironing that freezer paper into place on the front side or the, or the right side of my fabric. Fussy cutting it just right on the lines. And I do not remove my freezer paper when I'm getting that tree where I want it. I always leave that freezer paper on until I get everything glued. You can use white school glue. I'm using my Roxanne glue based it. And just bending down the top of that tree and just putting some little dots on the edges. Kind of leaving that applique into place though. And then pressing it down. And then I'll be lifting up the bottom side and doing the same thing. This glue is washable and so if a little bit oozes out that is not a concern you can just take a sponge even and just sponge it out
I'm taking my iron and just heat setting that. You want to make sure your glue is completely dry before going to your sewing machine. And then again, carefully removing that freezer paper. Now I'm going to be taking it to my sewing machine and I'm going to be thread painting the edges of this. You do want to use thread that matches your applique. Just getting my bobbin thread up there. I'm going to be tying these knots off. I have my free motion foot on and I'm going in my normal speed here. My feed dogs are dropped and notice I'm just going back and forth. I want to cover those edges. I go off the side a little bit right onto the background of, of my piece. Especially for an, a tree like this it's just kind of a cool look when it looks a little bit raggy. If you're not comfortable with free motion stitching, you can also do this with your regular foot um, and just go five or six stitches, stitches forward and then reverse your stitches and just keep going back and forth. You will have to turn your work more when you do it that way, but it is doable. And then again, I am just going to thread paint all the way around the edge of my, my tree. Getting those threads to the back, just using a self-threading needle for this, it just kind of makes it a little bit easier to do. And now I want to add my quilting to this. So I have my quilt batting on the back. You can see it sticking out there. I also have my, my backing on. So I have a sandwich made. And you'll see my sticking out. I do cut my batting and backing a little bit larger. I want to add some free motion quilting to this and I wanted to get a whimsical sun in the upper right hand corner and so this is part of the packet this this design here and I'm just using it to see if my stitches fit right and just kind of getting some ideas of what I want to do at my sewing machine. Now you if you're not comfortable with just taking this to the sewing machine and just winging it you can certainly put your um, design on with the heat erase pen Make sure that your pen does erase. You want to always test things before you actually put something directly onto your quilt. But I'm just getting my design figured out here. I decide I'm going to on this side just do a meander stitch. I'm just going to go over the words and I'm going to be using cream colored thread on both the top and the bob bobbin. And I do not show this, but you'll see what it looks like when I'm done. And here it is. Now it's off to trimming that batting and that backing. Just getting everything all um, evened up. My next step that I'm going to be showing you is my favorite way of putting binding on. And I have watched a lot of YouTube videos on this and my fav this is my favorite method and I've been using it now for whenever I have to do a binding. Um, and it's both the Jenny at Missouri Quilt Company does it like this. Um, the Crafting Gemini does it the same way. Um, there's several different videos on it. Um, and that's the binding method I'm going to show you. First I'm going to add the, the hanging the hanger pockets on the back side. I'm just cutting out four inch squares. This is an Arteza ruler. I am using my Arteza mat and rotary color cut, cutter. I love my this Arteza mat. I love the half inch marks. They're just real prominent and you can see them very easily. Once I get those squares cut out I'm just forming triangles with them by pressing them in half. and pinning them to the back side of the top of my quilt. Just getting those raw edges to line up. And I'm going to be taking this to my sewing machine and I'm going to be stitching these into place using a scant quarter inch seam allowance. I do want it right inside the fourth inch. Now it's on to that favorite bind, binding method. You want to measure 
what you have here, what you're working with. So you measure your sides, you measure your top. I'm just kind of figuring out which, which piece or what color I want. I did decide to go with that darker green. You want to measure your sides, you want to measure your tops, and you want to add it, add it all together and add 12 inches. Now on this particular quilt I had 12 inches, inches on the top and the bottom and my sides were 14 and a half inches. Plus the 12 inches equals the 65 inches. I had just a small piece of this green fabric and so I, I had to cut several different strips of this to, to equal that that's, um, 65 inches. And my binding is two and a half inches wide. Notice how I'm laying this like an L. I do want to cut to, to um, stitch this diagonally or, or miter this. So I'm pinning this into place. And also notice I'll have a little bit of the fabric sticking out at the top and the sides. This really helps just so I can see and you know, make sure I'm, I'm ending up at the corner the way you should be. You can also take your ruler and a marker and mark that if you're not quite confident in it. And once it's marked, then you will sew right on the top of your marked line. You want to cut that down to a quarter of an inch seam allowance. And then open that up and lay it flat and press it open. <clears throat> and then it's on to my next piece. Doing it the same way, just laying it down, and we'll be stitching, stitching it going um, diagonally. Once everything's stitched and pressed open, you want to press everything in half lengthwise, wrong sides together, just matching those raw edges. To attach this, you want to leave a six inch tail, and I do start on the side of my quilt taking a quarter inch seam allowance. I do go back and forth there on that, that um, when I start my seam. And now I stop a quarter of an inch away from the corner, pivot, and go right off the edge. Lift up my presser foot. Turn that piece back and then fold it over so that that fold line is even with the top of the of the quilt. And then you go ahead and you just stitch down this next side. I do go back and forth to secure that stitch. Again, taking my quarter inch seam allowance all the way down until you get to the next corner. Stop a quarter of an inch, pivot, go off the edge, fold it back, fold, form your fold so that is nice and neat and lined up to the top, back and forth, and then continue until you hit the next corner. You do want to stop so you have again a six inch tail. So you're gonna be you're gonna have an opening of approximately 12 inches on that beginning side of your quilt. And here you can see my tails. You want to overlap those tails now, and you want to cut them the width of your binding which is two and a half inches so they're going to overlap two and a half inches and you just you just clip that off and then you open it up and you stitch this diagonally the same way you did to 
join your binding pieces. This gets a little fiddly. You do have to kind of fold your quilt in a little bit. Um, but it will be the exact length that that binding needs to be. And then you can finish off sewing the, the opening of your binding. Once this is sewn, I do trim that seam as well and open it. And it's done. And your corners turn out so nice. This is a hand-stitched project here. I will be hand-stitching that down. And I wanted to share with you, I did add color to the back of this using my watercolor paints. I did a video previously. I'm, I'm, I will put that up in the iCard of watercoloring on fabric. And then I put the doll on the back. Thank you so much, everybody, who's joined me. I hope you enjoyed this. I think this would make a wonderful gift. I have some pictures at the end. Have a creative week. Bye for now.